Good morning. Welcome everyone out to Truth Baptist Church this morning. So glad that you're here. Uh, welcome. Welcome home. Is anyone here for their first time? I think I recognize everybody. Oh, there we go. We got two. All right. Praise the Lord. Titus. Titus. We've got three. All right. I got a job for you. How are you? Okay, that's good. That's good. Could you say it? Now everybody's like put their hands down like I'm good. Protect your face. <laughs> this lady right back here. Oh Lord help <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, for those of you that this is your first time here, I'd like to say welcome home. Uh, today you're our honored guest. We're so glad that you're here, but come on back tonight, come on back Wednesday night, come on back next week, and your family. We'll treat you like family, take care of you like family, and we're really, really glad that you've joined us today. Um, as we get started, are there any prayer requests this morning? Amen. And please uh, continue to remember Chris Riston. Any other prayer requests this morning? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests here this morning? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Skip, would you? I'll go ahead. Yep, yep, pray for death. She's not feeling well this morning. Amen, absolutely. Brother Skip. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, just uh, one announcement here this morning. Uh, this Wednesday. That's right. This Wednesday? Yes. This Wednesday. Uh, trunk or treat. They're going to be here at the church uh, at 6.30 p.m. We are excited. Uh, come on out. Uh, decorate your trunks. Bring the candy. Uh, and we're going to have a wonderful time. I do have uh, something special in mind that's going to promote social distancing. It's called the Candy Launcher 3000. But uh, uh, I've engineered something just with our kids in mind. Uh, so, so get ready. As long as they have, like, protective gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing. <laughs> He's pumped. All right, uh, Sister Vaughn, you said uh, you wanted to give an announcement or something this morning? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Sydney, would you be uh, willing to play the piano for a congregational this morning? How about we do Victory in Jesus? All right, let's get up. You know that one. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thumbing through the book. Like, I just feel like I have to. <laughs> 
on the screen, though. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? testimonies this morning. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I want to give y'all an opportunity to praise his holy name because he is worthy of praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. 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 Anyone else this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. I'm about to pick up this guy. 
Yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Appreciate you. <laughs> Amen. Sister Johnny?
speak peace, you speak peace, prove me, you speak peace, you speak peace, you speak peace. thankful today that I know the one who speaks peace today, aren't you? Amen. I sure am thankful that you're here today. Um, I know what it's like to preach when you're not here, and it isn't fun. Amen? Uh, I never said that I preach for a crowd. I've always told God I, I preach to um, one, two, three. Amen? <laughs> when he's... Jason said, I just don't want him to go back to one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, I pray for my I pray for Brother Chris. It's not right when he's not here. Amen. I miss him. I love him. He's my buddy. He's my friend. He's like another dad to me. And uh, I, I guess you shouldn't say that because he's older than me because that's rude. But he is. He listens to me complain and then he complains to me back and then he tells me to suck it up amen that's what dads do right amen but i i'm a, i appreciate him and and uh, the the uh, sunday school teachers i want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you um i know we're not out of this thing but you've made it a lot easier amen your adaptability uh, has been amazing. You went to Zoom. Some of you has never done anything with technology. You figured it out, and uh, and we were able to still continue on. And uh, I believe Miss Sydney, my wife, she brought some uh, a, uh, Starbucks gift cards. Amen. I mean, she has a card in there, but let's be honest. It's what's the inside that counts. Amen. So, uh, but. You say, I don't drink Starbucks. Well, Lord, I do, so uh, it's still pastor appreciation for the rest of the week, so just throw it back, honey, amen? Uh, uh, but I am, I appreciate you. I'm th very thankful for you. We could not do what we're doing around here uh, and continuing to see uh, people saved and lives changed and discipled because that's what you do after salvation. You disciple people, and we missed the ship on that for a little while, but we got back. We boarded up, amen, and that's where we're going to stay, amen. Uh, but I'm thankful for you guys, uh, and uh, I sure am thankful to look out and see uh, so many faces here this morning, so many uh, people, uh, first time, first time back, uh, you know, uh, some people say, I, I never left. Oh, praise God for you, but amen. I really appreciate the ones that are coming back. Amen. Um, but I want you to know this, that it, it is Pastor Appreciation Month, and I, I'm sure am thankful to be the pastor of Truth Baptist Church. It has been my lifelong dream to be the pastor here, and I just didn't know it. And uh, I'm thankful for that, and I'm, I'm thankful to uh, be allowed to, the opportunity to speak to you every every chance God gives me. If I if I didn't appreciate listen, I want you to know this. When you're not here, I care. It bothers me because this relationship that we have, you may turn it off, but it, I never get the opportunity to. If I wanted to be a preacher who just stands in the pulpit, who, who, who just runs around and people just like, yay, this is this, yeah, I would be an evangelist, amen? I loved being an evangelist. It was fun. You go in there, you preach your guts out, and you leave. But I tried that as a pastor. I'd go in, preach my gut out, and leave. And I found out, you all get in the car with me, go home. Y'all crawl in the bed with me sometimes, amen. And I'm going, Lord, get out of here. I care, amen. That's why I'm a pastor, and I care about you, and I think about you daily. I pray for you, and I'm thankful to be your pastor. And honestly, 
uh, if I could afford it and Sydney would let me, um, I'd give every one of you a pastor appreciation gift. So I'm just going to say I appreciate you. Amen. It's cheaper. Uh, We've been looking at the Holy Ghost, amen. We've been having ghost stories up in here because it's, it's that time of the year. And uh, for the next two weeks, we're going to continue on this week and the next two weeks after. And then after that, we're going to have um, Easter Reloaded. Brother Chris Holstein's going to come preach to us for homecoming service. We never had one, but we've never had a preacher somewhere else. So we're bringing him back in here uh, for homecoming service. And my mic on... Did it cut out? I broke it again, didn't I? We on. We off. Timers out there. And uh, we got a little short. But who, who, I don't really need one. I'm only doing this for that lady on Facebook who got mad at me on Wednesday because I... Y'all, I'm going to break this. <laughs> all right. Amen. We all right today. If there's anything else that can go weird. I don't want to say wrong. It just went weird up in here. Thank you, Brother Pass. I appreciate you. Everybody put your hands together for Pass. He's our friend. He takes care of business. Amen. Amen. Now we good in the hood. Hallelujah. All right. We've been looking at ghost stories, amen. And in this ghost story series, we've looked at a few different things, uh, but we found that, that, that when Jesus left, he made a promise. Whenever he ascended on high, he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. And we found that the reason we have power is so that we can witness <laughs> uh, don't go into that again, preacher. You hurt my feelings again. Um, but th- you see, you've received power, and the power is to be a witness. And you say, what, o- what does the witness bring? Well, we find in Acts chapter number 2 that, the, that it brings about revival. Amen? It brings about revival. And I've noticed over the last couple of weeks that we've seen a spirit of revival to return to this church. COVID tried to take it away. Uh, uh, the government tried to take it away. Uh, rioting in the streets have tried to take it away. But I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit has been amongst us and we've experienced a taste of revival. I'm excited about that. Amen. But we see that Satan tries to end revival. And he does it from the outside and he also does it from the inside as we seen last week in, in Ananias and Sapphira. Or Sapphira. But we continue on in the book of Acts and this will be my last sermon out of the book of Acts. Uh, this for a little while at least. Um, Acts chapter number 7 if you will. We find that in Acts chapter number 7 that there is as the church is continuing to see revival, as the church is continuing to experience growth, as the church is being added to daily, and there's conflict going on that there is in Acts chapter number 7, there is a, a, a resisting spirit that's taking place while one man is resting in the spirit. And we find that, that while other people are resisting, this one man made a, a great impact and it was how he rested in the Spirit. His name was Stephen, a man full of power. He, had it, he, uh, he is called before the council and, and the high priest and he begins to preach a, to the religious leaders about their historical unbelief. And if I ended every sermon like he ended it, you wouldn't come back. Let's read it. It says this, verse 48, Howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house? 
will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Now here, here's where it gets a little... <clears throat> You stiff-necked generation. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart and in ears. You do always, look at that word, resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have you not your fathers persecuted? Let's skip down. So now we see that he preaches this message and they ain't happy about it. Look at verse 54. It says, And when they had heard these things, they, they were cut to the heart. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's like a heat-seeking missile. He knows what you need. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Amen. This is before guns and deacons carrying guns. Amen. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears. They ran upon him with one accord, casting him out of the city and stoning him. And, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name is Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now look what he does. He kneels down and he cries with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this to their charge. Lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, I think the Bible's very deliberate in what it's saying here. He, let's see, he rested. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being so good to us, Lord. I, I ask you, God, that you'd empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. I love. I love your people. And I love your word. And I pray that you take my heart and burst it open this morning. And let your people learn your word. I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit, God. Because every service is the Super Bowl. And I pray that together we leave no doubt. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. To this point we have seen that Satan attacked like a raging lion seeking whom he may devour as he took John and Peter and, and, and threw them into prison but he could not stop the word of God. I promise you this, they may attack, they may attack uh, Satan may attack the leadership but if the congregation gets the word in them, the congregation will not stop preaching the word. Amen. They continued on and then we saw as Satan began to, to take on a different form, a slithering form as he slid in the back door and he began to use uh, Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira, I don't know, I never can say her name right, amen, it brought her, they slithered into their lives and he began to manipulate their mind like he did in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and he began to infiltrate the church and, and he caused them to tempt spirit we know what their story ended like it was quick and it was dirty but the word of God continued on Satan tries something new now what's he do preacher he comes in the form of organized religion you see, when Satan can't get in from the outside, when Satan can't slither into a member and destroy a church, he'll take bad doctrine and put it within the church and stir up the church. A form of what is right. A, I don't want to get on masks again. 
it's too soon. <laughs> Satan's trying to manipulate the body of Christ. and He uses the government, the church, the, the, the organizational portion of the church to manipulate it. This clergyman, the high elect. See, the church was going forward. It began in its infancy here. We're only two years removed from, from really getting started. And the church was growing and people were needing help. So God said, hey man, you might want to get some help. But, and, and they found out some, some men who had, who had become filled with the Spirit. Who were mighty in deeds and works. Who had a good report. And he said, hey, you want to be a deacon? <laughs> they probably should have said, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but these men of God became deacons and they stepped into the place and they took care of the people. Satan doesn't like when God's people are being taken care of by God's men. So he further developed and further pushed and they bring Stephen in here and we see that Stephen has a, a word for you organized religious people. He says you're stiff-necked and you're uncircumcised in your heart and in your ears and you do always resist the Holy Spirit. I was studying out this. I found out that there are three ways that you can oppose the Holy Spirit. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can quench the Holy Spirit. And you can resist the Holy Spirit. Over the next three weeks, we're going to discover each one of these. Today, we're going to look at what it is to resist. You see, because for you to resist the Holy Spirit, you have to first have the draw of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be speaking to you. Mm-hmm. Say a word. He's doing something in your life right now trying to get you to open your eyes to the bigger issue. But he says you're always resisting him. And I want to give you a warning. If you resist the Holy Spirit, eventually he'll stop stirring you. Mm-hmm. We've been in this location for going on four years now. Four years I've watched God bring people in here that I've never seen before, I've never come in contact with. Uh, and they would come in the, the, the room and some of them came on a bus, some of them came with a group and, and some of them came with friends and they would sit in the church house and I would, I would watch as the service would go on and our singers would get up here and with the Holy Ghost anointing they'd begin to sing the word and, and, and proclaim how good God is and we would go to worship and I'd watch as their faces would turn different shades and different colors and I'd get up here and I, the Lord would allow me to preach a message about how good Jesus is I don't know if you know this is the common theme of every sermon that I got is Jesus is good, amen and I, and I noticed that, that their face would begin to change even more colors. It'd get red and then it'd get pale white and tears would begin to well out of their eyes and it would drip down. And I'd, I'd watch as they would sit there and the Holy Spirit would begin to work in their life. And you say, what happened, preacher? I watched as they gripped the back of the pews, as their children come to the altar, as their my wife comes to the altar, as their, their family begins to beg for them. But I'm here to tell you they'd sit there a little bit longer and a little bit longer waiting for an opportunity to get out of here and, and you say what are you saying preacher I'm saying this uh, that they would resist the draw of the Holy Spirit with all of their might Nothing more heartbreaking than seeing men and women that God wants to call home stand up and say not today Jesus Resisting the Holy Spirit. Mm. Stephen said, You do always resist Him. I wonder if there's anybody in here tonight or this morning that God's been dealing with lately. 
been talking to you, but your response to him is different. Stephen said, you do always. The people didn't like the always part. You see, I found out that some people don't mind the sometimes, but they don't like the always. Amen? Their reaction was one of literal anger, and they come literally bite. Could you imagine? Amen? Being Brother Skip, you up here preaching, somebody comes up and just, ah, like Count Dracula, right on you, honey. Yeah. Take a step back. <laughs> Me and Chris tried to carry guns one time. He was jumping up and down, worshiping it, fell out of his pocket. I was like, yes. <laughs> so we have a rule. Preachers don't carry, just deacons. Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but for real. <clears throat> when the biting couldn't stop him. Because he just kept talking. They got something bigger and began to stone him. And the rocks began to fly. You say, what happens when the rocks begin to fly? He kept going. You see, I found this to be true that when a, 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 a group of individuals uh, or when a man or a woman decides in their heart that they're going to follow God at whatever cost, people don't like it. They may not come and bite you physically because we don't do that anymore. Amen. But they go to Facebook and start biting. Amen. <laughs> My mom and dad called it backbiting. Amen. And they start stirring up trouble, biting on people, doing all that they can to resist the spiritual call on their life. And when that person doesn't show it up, I promise you, it will always end with rocks flying. Mm -hmm. They won't like what you got to say, so they throw a rock at you. My brother used to do the same thing. You see, but with Stephen, it didn't work. You see... All Stephen was trying to do was follow God at all costs. All he wanted to do was follow God. You say, why should I follow God when, all, when, when it's going to make people hate me, when it's going to make people talk about me, when, it's, when, when I'm going to be lied on, when I'm going to be cheated, when I'm going to be mistreated, when I, when, I go, when I go through, when I have rumors about my family, why is it that, that I have to go through this? Why, preacher, why? Because you're carrying something great. and People may not like it. They don't, it's not that they don't like you, it's just that they don't like the spirit you're bringing with you. Amen. You see, but when rocks begin to fly, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, begins to rest on His people. You say, what kind of, what, what, what happens, what kind of power is given when rocks are flying? I want to report to you, verse number 60 says this, it says, and he fell asleep. In the midst of all the rocks flying, in the, in the midst of chaos and turmoil when people were angry at him, the Bible didn't say that he was written to. The Bible didn't say that he, that he, that he, that, that he, was, he was murdered on the street. The Bible says that he simply fell asleep. You say, what does that mean? He, he rested. Stephen rested when rocks were being flung at him. When everybody else would be like, you know what, good, I'm good. Keep your rocks. Holy Spirit can hang out over there. I'm, I'm leaving. He said, he continued and he rested. And I believe this, that every person will stop resisting the Spirit when they understand what it's like to have the power of rest. You see, Stephen discovered a new power to rest. When rocks are flying. What gave Stephen rest? Well, I'm glad. I, I've been waiting to get to this point. I've been hurrying to try to get here. Amen. Look at verse 55 and 56. It says, but, the whole, but he, being filled with the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven. 
And he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand. What caused Stephen to rest? Stephen saw Jesus standing for him. Mm, man. See, some of you ain't very excited this morning. I don't know what happened. I don't know what kind of coffee you drink. I drink Starbucks. I, I, it's straight black, homie. It's the best. I don't fool around. Some of you need to get with it this morning. You see, I, I listen, honey. I want to tell you this. It's only been two years since Jesus has ascended to heaven. Now I want you to think about this for just a minute. He, 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 he ascends off the earth and he begins to, to move through the Milky Way. And he, as he goes past this star and that star calling them by name. And he looks past this planet and this planet. He comes into the heavenly form and he, he sees heaven off in a distance. And, and he feels that spirit of home coming. And he, he's like, I just can't wait to get there. And he sets down on the streets of gold. Mm-hmm. And he begins to look in front of him, the gates of pearl, and he, he looks and he, ah, I'm home. And here he is, he sits down with his, with his, with his nail-pierced hands and his nail-pierced feet and his battered and broken body uh, that he's taken off the cross and ascended on high. And now he begins to walk through the streets, those streets of gold, and he walks through the, the gates of pearl and he looks around him and he sees all of those men and women who have gone on before that was just in paradise. And as they're being introduced to their new home and they can't, they don't care about a mansion just over the hillside amen they only care about the king has returned the king has returned and they're all lining the streets and here's the angels on one side and the holy host of heaven on the other and we see angels flying around and we see archangels here and there blowing their trumpet sounds and here we see a seraphim and here's a cherubim and, and they're all singing holy 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 is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come worthy, worthy as he walks down the streets of gold and he begins to walk up the hillside. Oh, they're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the king of kings. Glory is his name. And they begin to walk up that hillside of Zion and he, he comes into a place called the throne room. There it is, the throne room of God. And he sees God the Father sitting there and he says... Hey daddy, I come home. I went away on a mission. I come back as a victor. Amen. And he begins to say, and God he says, all power is given to you amongst heaven on earth. He said, here you go, son. Oh, the Bible says that he, that this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Paul said, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us? You say, what did he do, preacher? What did he do, preacher? He sat down. Whew. He sat. Now you still ain't pumped up, are you? You're not excited. You're like, well, he's just up there hanging out. Listen. World War II came. Everybody was scared to death of Hitler. Jesus said. America got an atomic bomb and dropped it on Japan. Jesus said. The Romans sacked the city of Jerusalem and tore down the temple and Jesus said y'all still don't get it do you I don't think you're ready now I'm quoting Beyonce in my head I gotta turn it off amen I weren't always a preacher I'm still a broke man You're looking at November 13th going, I don't know which way we're going to go. It's going to be bad. It's going to be good. It's going to be worse. It's going to be worse than good. <laughs> Where's Jesus? He's sitting. 
COVID came and we went crazy. You know what? He's sitting. Chaos running rampant in the streets of America. And Jesus is sitting. Jesus is sitting. There is chaos throughout all of the land. And Jesus hasn't left the throne, honey. He's still right where he sat down at. But I'm here to report to you. Praise God, I'm going to break another mic this morning. He's still seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. In fact, 16 times in all the Bible, the Bible says that He's at the right hand of the Father. 13 times He's seated at the right hand of the Father. But I'm here to report to you out of those three other times, the Bible says here in Acts chapter number 7, He stood for. I've been trying to be COVID friendly but y'all gave me three, three more spaces here he stood for Stephen he didn't stand for Hitler he didn't stand for America he won't stand for Trump he won't stand for Biden he won't stand for COVID he won't stand for nothing but let me tell you this when the saint of God is felt falling in the street and rocks are flung at his head and pain is all around him I'm here to report to you that Jesus will stand for you I missed you. <laughs> you said, preacher, that's Stephen, that ain't me. Baby, I know how you feel. But listen, I look out to the congregation of all the people who's been through real hell in the last three years. Suicide, family loss, mm, sicknesses. Brokenness, bankruptcy, heartache, divorce. The people under the sound of my voice has went through more hell than I've seen in any church in America. You say, where was God when it all went wrong? He's, he was there. He had moved. And when it was at its worst, I have confidence in believing that when I couldn't stand, he stood for me. You say, how do you know? I hope my sister don't watch this. But I watched this, my little nephew I went into a hospital. And I watched as my brother and my sister had more pain than I've ever seen anybody go through. And they proclaim God being good. My family isn't over the fact that we no longer have him with us. But we found that when he went missing into heaven, we had someone to stand with him. And I don't know what kind of pain you're in this morning. And I don't know what kind of heartache you have today. But I have met the one who's seated at the Father. And the same Jesus that stood for me is the same Jesus that will stand for you. Aren't you thankful this morning? <laughs> Let me give you one more thing just because <clears throat> Baptists don't like one point sermons. Here we go. It says, verse 60, he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice. What did he say? Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And it wasn't until he said that that he got the rest that he needed. You see, we learn a lot about Stephen. We learn a lot about ourselves when rocks are flying. 
Because what happens? We see that Stephen did two things. Recognize number one, his posture. He kneeled down. He lowered himself from the status in which he was and humbled himself at the rocks that were thrown. You see, I've, I've seen a lot of Facebook comments recently, and I'm doing my best with that. I didn't know I liked Facebook as much as I have until recently when I started seeing all these train wrecks. Train wrecks are interesting, amen? It's like, boom! Whoa, didn't see that coming. But everybody did, I promise. <clears throat> He lowered himself. He didn't fight back. You see, why did he lower himself and not fight back? Why didn't he go on a Facebook rant and tell everybody what he thought? Because he, he recognized that there's a higher priority to his life than winning. What did he do, preacher? The Bible says that he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge oh man does that hurt it hurt me when I read it start thinking about that for a second it wasn't until Stephen still, still, until Stephen had service on his mind that he finally got the rest that he needed you wonder why you're so restless it's probably because you're all about yourself selfishness will always lead to restlessness. He said, when I, or he said, Lord, don't let them have it. You say, what happened? He seen the one high and lifted up. He seen Jesus stand for him and that made him, Brother Skip, want to be like him. I promise you this, when you're going through hell and you see Jesus stand for you, you will want to be just like him. You say, how was he being just like him? You, you, like to, you like Romans 8, 28. I know all of you do. Half of you got the tattoo. Amen? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who them are the called according to his purpose. And you guys should go back in, pay the guy a couple ten more dollars and let him continue because the verse builds on that. That's just the introduction. There is a purpose in which you're going through the pain. And it is this to be, for he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You say, what does that mean? It means this, that the truth of the matter is we are, we, mm, we are to be conformed unto the image of Jesus Christ by the things that are working together, the pain that is working together for our good. Yeah. So think about this. Jesus has just been scourged. He's had a reed beat a crown of thorns on his back. They laid a robe of purple on him and beat him with a cat of nine tails. They cast lots over his robe. They plucked out his beard. They smacked his face and with him blindfolded and said, prophesy Jesus. They led him up the hillside and made him carry his cross until he couldn't bear it anymore. Then, if that wasn't bad enough, they made him lay down on top of that piece of wood he'd been carrying around and, and they said spread out your arms and he spread them out willingly and they began to take nails and drive it through his skin and then they, he took, the, they took their, his feet and they began to push him and, 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 and began to hammer him and the Bible records for us Jesus' response he says Father forgive them for they know not what they do see you want to be an example of Jesus when you're in pain and agony because someone's persecuting you that's when you find out how much you're like him the, you say give it to me in the Old Testament standard there's a man named Job his first book of the Bible's ever written amen first one written down and I, I'm just going to talk to you for just a second just hey, y'all remember Job yeah half of you feel like Job sometimes I'm with you like, Lord, could anything else go wrong? 
Amen. I mean, he just got hit by wave after wave after wave. Listen, Satan took everything from him and God allowed it. You need to know that. And finally, he takes his health and he's sitting in an ash heap, cutting himself, relieves some pain, letting that burning, that, those cinders burn off the boils that are inside of, on, 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 on his skin. And then he's got friends like we got friends. Y'all know the only ones that calls when you're in chaos. You listen, they want to know what's going on, but they don't care about you the other 364 days of the year. They slide in, they start talking to him. Finally, the Bible mm, let me read this to you. He prays for him. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. I like the terminology captivity. You say why? Because Satan had set up residence and took him into bondage. God turned that captivity and when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord also, I like this and some of you like this too, gave Job twice as much as he had before. You say preacher he got twice as much. But when I read through the list I see he gained back his camel, he gained back his cattle, he gained back all of his chickens and his hens and all the other people. But the Bible records that he got seven, seven sons and daughters. But he lost seven, how's that double? You see where cats and dogs, I'm sorry, <laughs> and camels and all the other animals don't have a place. Job's family had mansions. You say, what it was God saying to Job? I gave you seven down there, and I've got seven waiting on you. He says, no longer is your treasures on earth. But now your treasure, you have treasures stored up for you in heaven. So where your treasures is, there will your heart be also. He said, I've taken captivity captive. I have pulled you out and put your heart in heaven so that Satan can't come in and take you again. Your hope is in the Lord. Your restoration is in the Lord. Your purpose is in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord of God goes right there and he said it was all because he prayed for a chance. Praise God. He, he'll shout when you want. He, he pray. Listen, it, it's all because he prayed in his pain. Rocks are flying. And Stephen said, Lord, that Saul don't know no better. He read the law his whole life. He don't know no better. He hung out at Gamaliel's feet. He don't know no better. Don't let this sin be on his account. And the Bible said, he rested. Oh man, think about that for a moment as he rested there. And I know that I look through the congregation and you just need some rest. You just need some rest. But what if I were to tell you that the reason why you're so restless is because you've been resisting. You see, maybe we should ask the question this morning, am I resisting when I could be resting? A couple of years ago, I had a green Subaru legacy. Mm -mm, praise God. 1996, had a cracked bumper, but she rode good. Hallelujah. Best car I ever had until the transmission went out, and I didn't know that you could just buy a new transmission. I'd still have it. But it smelled, and there was this one spring... Amen that I sat on. And I was coming home from work in Huntington. And one of the guys that I worked with said, Hey man, you, I think you got a, something going on with your CV joint. I don't know what that means. He said, it, it has a little grind to it. There's a, something going on. And he said, turn. 
And I turned and it went. <laughs> he said, you need to get that fixed. That was three months before coming from Huntington. I made it to, to South Charleston thinking about Krispy Kreme. I wish. <laughs> it, I turned in one of those, you know, those long turns down there around Institute area. And it just feels like you just hold it like this, you'll be good. And it went, pop, pow! I thought somebody down in Dunbar got mad at the Subaru. I snapped and I heard, I pull off the side of the road. Here I am on the side of the road down somewhere between Dunbar and South Charleston going, Lord, I don't know what to do. So I did what every man does. I popped the trunk. I got some tools out. I popped the hood. I got a flashlight in the middle of the day. Yep, it's broke. <laughs> Here I am looking at the engine. And something down underneath is what's broke. So I said, well, I can't fix it. I, I called. My buddy said, hey, man, did you say I had a bad CV joint? He said, yeah. He, I said, what happens if it breaks? He said, well, you ain't going nowhere. I said, all right. You have a good day. Bye. I called him. I called the AAA, and they sent out a, a tow truck. And here I am, broke down on the side of the road, can't move nowhere. He pulls in front of me, and then he backs that thing up, amen. Beep, beep, beep. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's the sound of a man about to work. He goes, what's wrong with it? I said, it's broke. He said, okay. He crawls under it, hooks the belts up or whatever he does to it, and he pushes that button, and here goes the Subi on the back of that thing. He said, get in. I said, all right. You know what? The Subi made it to the shop. When it was clanking and it was banging and it was busting on the side of the road, when it broke down, it had no hope of going any further. But it wasn't until it got yoked up with something that could carry it that it was able to meet the destination that it needed to go. And I know that some people in here have been banging around. Their legs are hurting, their heads hurting, their bodies hurting. Listen, their bankrupts, their, listen, your bank account's hurting, your, your brain is hurting from thinking. You've been, you've been reading so much Facebook that you can't even stand yourself. And here you are sitting in the church house going, man, I feel so broke down this morning. What can I do? What can I do? What? can I do? I'm saying this that all it takes is one phone call to heaven and there will be a tow truck that comes flying out of the heavens and backs up to you, hooks up and carries you when you cannot stand for yourself. Jesus said you have power when the Holy Spirit comes. And that's power to rest when Satan's got his rocks flying. I don't know about you, I'm tired of the rocks, I'm tired of resisting, it's time to start resting. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around, I don't know quite possibly who needed this sermon, but let me ask you this question, are you resting when you, are you resisting when you need to be resting? You're trying to fix all of the problems with all of the pain that's going on, but you're not qualified to fix it. Are you resting or are you resisting the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? If you're here today and you say this, preacher, you know what? I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. So I've been trying to do this whole thing by myself. Will you pray for me? I will. I promise. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to lift your hand and say, pray for me, preacher. I'm not going to call you out. Just lift it. Sift it up there. Amen. 
Maybe you're here today and you say this preacher. I know that I've been saved. Jesus has come into my life. He saved me. I want to lift my hand to testimony because I'm thankful for it. Here's my hand. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you say this preacher. I have been trying to do this thing on my own. I've been resisting to the help that I need. Will you pray for me that I could rest in Jesus? Here's my hand. I can rest in the Holy Ghost power. Here's my hand. That I, that I could help other people even in my problems and my pain. Here's my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher, I need Jesus to stand for me. I can't stand for me. Here's my hand. How about we do this this morning? I look out through all the congregation. People raise their hands everywhere. Let me ask you, why don't you come? Let that tow truck back up to you and carry you for a little while. Won't you do that? Won't you come? See if you step out of your seat, come down to this altar and begin to let the Holy Spirit work in your life every day. Are we resisting? Or are we resting? Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I ask you, God, that you take this message and begin to use it in our lives. Lord, help us not to resist you, but rest in you, knowing that you have the power, because you have all power. And Lord, we love you. We praise you. You're wonderful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want to say a few things before I let you go. Um, we do have church tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's, it's been exciting. Amen. We've seen uh, the younger preachers preach. Brother Daniel's preached a couple times. Who's preaching tonight? Trevor's preaching tonight. Amen. And uh, God is doing something on Sunday nights. It's exciting. I get to sit and listen. These guys get to uh, cut their teeth. Is that, is that, that's not a pro is that nice? No. <laughs> hey, whatever. Hey. They're growing, amen? And, and that's how you grow is you, you get opportunities and you say yes to them and you do them, amen? Um, but I'm thankful for Brother Daniel and his, uh, his determination to make this a success. Um, pray for Brother Chris and Miss Shelley. Pray for Miss Shelley for putting up with Brother Chris, amen? Um, then don't forget about Trunk or Treat at 6.30 on, uh, on Wednesday. Miss Vaughn asked me as soon as I got here, she said, what will we do if it rains? I was like, Lord, don't put rain on us. But if it rains, we're still going to do it. We've got the entire facilities to use. So we'll just spread out so that the kids have to walk around. And we'll let them walk around six to 20,000 times until they're so tired that when they get home, they go right to bed. Amen. Y'all don't act like that That don't run through your mind most of the time. If he runs one or two more laps, he'll be out in the car and I can get a moment of peace. Um, we, also, during the bread and milk extravaganza, we discovered that um, somebody needed a new, what's it called? Carburetor? No. Cadillac converter. They needed a new Cadillac converter so much so that they crawled underneath the church van and decided to take ours. So, and a Cadillac converter uh, is estimated to be more than the van was worth. So what we'll do is, we'll get rid of the van, but I want you to pray about something. In my heart, I'd like to, I'd like to buy a new van. I don't know when, but I'm praying about it. And I'd like to get a van, and I want to begin to run... A van to some of these homes again. I don't know how we're going to get them in here. We may just let them be the choir. Amen. Nobody else wants to set up here with me. <laughs> but we want to bring some people in again. I want to get, actually, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I want to get two vans. I want to get two vans. I want to send one to those homes, and I, I want one to run to, to collect kids or, or, or to people who can't get in cars. I, I, want, to, I want to ask 
skip to go downtown Rand and just go, hey, get on my bus and bring them in. Because we got something for them. Amen? Listen, imagine what it's going to be like around here in about two years when all these little people and the ones downstairs are a little older. See, that's what I thought about during COVID. While you guys were going nuts, I was thinking about these little guys. How I couldn't see them, but I was going to. And I was going to get to watch them grow up. And I started going, Lord God, send us somebody who has a heart for young people, who has a sanity and don't have gray hair yet that you can give them fresh gray hair. Because in about five years, the teen department and every young family in this church is going to be going crazy because it's going to smell like teen spirit in here. Amen? But I'm thankful to be your pastor. If I didn't tell you earlier, I'm going to say it again. I'm thankful to be your pastor. All of the the messages and the, the cards and stuff like that that I've got throughout the, the month. Um, uh, the encouragement has been a blessing to me. I, I got a new pair of socks that I can't wait to wear. Praise God. And listen, if you can't figure anything out, you know, socks is always good. Uh, Amazon gift card, socks, same thing, amen. <laughs> but I, I'm thankful to be your pastor. I speak for the other two guys. It's, it's a privilege. It's a headache sometimes, but that's just because we love you. Amen. But uh, I can't hug you. I can't uh, shake hands with you yet. But December's coming, and I've got it circled on the calendar, and that's the day I'm praying that I get to hug you again. But until then, I'm going to pray and dismiss you. Now, Daniel, you pray. I've already prayed.